So you've drawn this amazing face, you drew the outlines, laid down all the base colors, but now what? Where do you put the shadows? The first lighting situation is called butterfly lighting. In this lighting situation the light is in front of the head and a little bit above the head. Here the shadows are beneath the eye sockets, under the nose, under the chin and a little bit on the lips. Butterfly lighting is called like that because the shadow under the nose somewhat resembles a butterfly. Yeah, it takes some imagination, but you get what I mean. When you take the light and move it a little bit further above the head, the shadows get longer. As you can see here, the shadow below the chin, below the nose, below the lips, they get longer and especially the shadows uh, around the eye sockets. They get way bigger and longer. Also, the upper lip is pretty much covered in shadow completely at some point. Now, if you're shading with only two values like I'm doing here, you can basically also try to paint the sides of the face in shadow. That can also look pretty good. The second lighting situation is called loop lighting. Loop lighting is basically when the light is above the head, but about a 45 degree angle to the side. Here the eye sockets are in shadow, the side of the nose that's turning away from the light is in shadow, and the whole side of the face is also in shadow. The name comes from the fact that the nose casts a little shadow that kinda loops around the nose. In this case the shadow goes more to the side and the lips also cast a shadow in the same direction. Also the chin casts a big shadow that covers the whole side of the neck. The upper lip is basically completely in shadow and throws a shadow on the lower lip. The next lighting situation is called Rembrandt lighting. Rembrandt lighting starts out like loop lighting, it's very similar, but the light source is turned even more to the side of the face. That leads to the fact that the nose and the eye sockets throw an even longer and bigger shadow, as you can see right here. Also the lower lips cast a big shadow that connects to the chin. And the chin itself casts a very big shadow that basically covers the whole left side of the neck. The key here is the little triangle of light in the shadow area. This is basically called the Rembrandt triangle. The name comes from famous Dutch painter Rembrandt, who used this lighting situation in many of his portraits. Number four is split lighting. Split lighting is when the light is coming straight from the side and here one side of the face is pretty much covered in shadow. And it's called like that because light and shadow are pretty much evenly split among the face. Only a few areas in the light area are covered in shadow. In this case the left side of the eyeball and the eyelids. The next one is called rim lighting and here basically the whole face is covered in shadow because the light source is behind the head. It's only at the rim of the face that you see light at all and obviously that's where the name comes from. This is actually quite easy to paint and while it doesn't look amazing by itself it can be pretty great when you're combining two light sources. So stick with me here, we'll do that later in the video. Number six is under lighting. Now this one looks a little bit different. Underlighting is obviously when the light source is below the head and here pretty much the whole forehead is covered in shadow. The area above the lips is in shadow, also the upper cheeks and the upper eyelids are in shadow. And finally the nose casts a big shadow upwards. Regarding the lips it's kind of the opposite of before, the upper lip is lit and the lower lip is in shadow. Also the upper part of the chin is in shadow. Because this lighting situation is so unusual, it is very useful to give something an evil and scary or creepy look. And now we come to the cool part of shading, using two light sources. For example, loop and rim lighting. In this case you take loop lighting as a base and then add a second light source that only gets to the areas where the first light source doesn't get. In this case the light source is behind the head and just like rim lighting does, only illuminates the rim of the face. It's a very cool effect that can add a lot of atmosphere to a drawing. Just take this drawing I did for my black paper drawing video and imagine how it looks without the rim light. Boring, doesn't it? So let's put that back in. I think it adds a lot to the image. Another cool combination is Rembrandt lighting and side lighting. Starting with Rembrandt lighting you kinda add a light source that's coming straight from the side and in this case all planes facing to the left are lit by the second light source. Right here the left side of the face, the neck and the left side of the nose. Note that the upper part of the nose is in shadow because the eye socket on the left is casting a shadow on the upper part of the nose so that the second light source has no chance to get there. This can be a very effective and atmospheric lighting situation that you see again and again in art. Now here are some bonus tips. 
Number one is wrinkles. Wrinkles can have a huge impact on the shadows on a face. Obviously, the older you are, the more wrinkles you have on your face. And these tend to throw little shadows, depending on how deep they are. Of course, the basic shadow patterns stay the same, but it's still something to consider. Really deep wrinkles can cast really deep shadows too. The most common ones are the wrinkles beside the nose. These tend to appear first when you're getting older. And they often are visible on young people too, especially when they smile. So keep that in mind. Number two, individual anatomy. Age is not the only factor that has a huge impact on the shadows on a face. People have different anatomy too. I think it becomes especially visible when looking at the eye sockets. People with very pronounced eye sockets often have their whole eyes covered in shadow when the light is shining from above. But some people have less pronounced eye sockets and the eyelids can still catch some of the light, like in this example. Also, men in general tend to have deeper eye sockets than women. So that's something to think about too. And the third tip is the degree of body fat. People with high amounts of body fat tend to have smoother shadows, but apart from that, the shadow patterns on the face aren't that different. But thinner people have more edges on the faces. It gets especially apparent in the cheek area. Very thin people tend to have hollow cheeks. And these hollow cheeks are often in shadow. Also, the eyeballs tend to be more pronounced and have a little form shadow on them. This example may look a little bit weird, but Google it. With thin people, the shadows can actually look quite like this. Now, please check out these other two videos of mine to take your knowledge of shading to the next level. I really hope you got some value out of this. Thanks for watching and see you next time.